welcome back to another video on my channel getting them out really well at the minute today it's my first it's not a review it's just an it's an overview of a ride and that ride as you would have seen in the title is shockwave the intimate sand coaster opened at Drayton manor back in 1994 my home park and i personally think as you'll know it's an elite ride now yes it isn't the best in the UK, but I think it's so unappreciated, and that's why I wanted to make this video. So yeah, I'm just going to go through the ride experience, the theme, the queue line, my thoughts on it, why I, why it is one of my favourite coasters in the UK. Because I think, like, many people would just disregard Drayton Manor as a thrill park anymore. Maybe 20 years ago they would have. But now nobody sees it as a thrill park, and it, I think it really has some great thrill and attractions. So yeah, so keep an eye, an eye out for this series and I'll go over some of my flat rides, thrill rides, water rides that I really love and that are still at Drayton Manor to the, or other parks across the UK to this day. So yes, first on in this series is Shockwave, the Indian stand-up coaster as I said, opened back in 1994, the year of the roller coaster with Nemesis and the big one. Now, it obviously it is obviously well known as the worst out of the three. I've done two, I just haven't done the big one yet. And I would put Nemesis above it, but not by much. I still think they're both very decent coasters. Obviously, just starting out with the theme of this coaster, it doesn't have such a theme. It's a, it, 10 years ago or so, I would have classed it as more of a, like an experience, like weather sort of themed area. You had Stormforce 10, which is obviously quite water based. You had Maelstrom, which is like a tornado sort of thing. And then you had G-Force even, I forgot the name there, which is obviously based around the sort of the G forces and as a pilot, what you felt. Obviously, since you had Air Race and Splash Canyon was also down there, which aren't sort of based the same things. But then you get the point. It was sort of a themed area, all about different things, but they weren't such interlinked. Storm Force Ten was more about the R and L I when it opened. Uh, Maelstrom's much more of a beach themed ride. Shockwave, it, it's very different. It sort of merges with Splash Canyon, with like as like a. When the Splash Canyon was open, it was much for like a, I wouldn't say mechanical, but it was like a working town sort of theme. It felt like a bit run down, like a mining town, but without that sort of theme, it was more just, it was quite plain. If you've been on um, Splash Canyon before it closed a few years ago, and we'll get onto that later in the video, you'll understand that it had quite a distinct theme. It weren't in your face theming, but Shotwave still has a nice, it has a blue, currently has a blue shed. Sort of, I say shed, it makes it sound so bad. It was like a, it's like a blue wooden station, probably 60 feet off the ground. It's, it's a really nice club, it's a ray station. And the queue line starts on ground level. It weaves around a little bit outside if it's very busy. And then it goes all the way up the stairs. Up, so I think there's a, you, there's a great, the ground floor in the bottom, a ramp up, then another level of queue, then a ramp up and then the station. Now, I gotta be honest, it's a nice, it's a decent queue line. It's even though it's all indoors, you have a great soundtrack by radi uh, Radiation, it's called, by the Bass Kids. It used to be on G Force, the soundtrack, and they moved it to Shockwave. I've talk, been talking to the, the team there, and uh, they're gonna let me use it in some videos. So I, it might be in an intro in the future, so keep an eye out. It might even be some point in this video, you never know. But yeah, great soundtrack, decent. Q line it's not the nicest it's not the nicest on a hot summer day because obviously it's all indoors same with accelerator the drain on it as well but yes you climb to the top of the station it's quite, it's quite a trek you it's hard to marathon as i know parksville knows because he tried to ride it as many times as he could in the day and the Q line killed him but yeah moving on you reach as you reach the station you get stopped there used to be a front row queue due to covid that was removed i don't know if that's coming back or not whenever that is but yeah, there used to be a front row queue. Obviously, COVID stopped that. So now you get assigned a row from row one to seven, I believe. I believe it is seven rows. Six cars even, not seven. I apologise. Six rows. And I've got to be honest, the front is so much better than the back. The back is a lot more intense. The further back you go, it's much more intense, more whippy. But it's quite rough. And this is where everyone says, oh, shockwave's rough, shockwave's rough. If you ride it on the back, yeah, it's quite jolty. I wouldn't say it's rough yet. It's jolty and a few, it, the inversions are quite jolty. On the front, it's smooth. It is as smooth as Nemesis on the front. 
as on the shockwave on the front. It's very smooth, despite what people say. But yes, you you board the ride, you sit on what I, what I'd call it. It's like it's like a it's like a bicycle seat, and that you stand on. It's quite hard to get in because it's quite half the ground. I'm six, over six foot, and it's hard for me to get. It's quite hard for me to get in. And then so you have half the restraint already down, and it's like cut in half. And then you have the other half way above you, so you have to pull that down, and then it sort of, it forms like a regular intermittent restraint, because obviously this is an intermittent stand up, not a B and M stand up. You have to remember that. So when you pull that down, they lock row by row. From if you want, if you go, if you can only get one ride on, make sure you get the, try and get the front. I don't know. Obviously, post COVID, they'll probably let you just go on the front. I recommend it a lot, especially if it's raining. The rain rides on this, brilliant in the front. And then. You, and then you're dispatched. Obviously, normally it's only one. I haven't seen two train service in years on Shockwave, so unfortunately it's only on one train. So if you go on a busy day, do expect quite large queues. But yeah, then you ascend to 120 feet on a lift hill. Well, that's where it, see, stop. stop. We're gonna stop there. No, you don't think. Oh, it's just got a lift hill. You go along a, bra a, a brake run. So effectively, the maintenance shed is the, way, the only way for the train to get on it it has to roll out the station then go across and then reverse into the maintenance shed that's parallel to the station so you go along an, a, a really straight section well it is straight a straight section then a tiny little dip a, class, a classic of Walter Bollinger and Claude Malabard back in the 90s a little dip under the lift hill just to obviously swap, swap the blocks uh, create a new block section basically and then you'll climb to a height of 120 feet, which is quite tall for a UK coaster, especially in the location it is. Great views across the countryside around, really pleasant, not not disturbed, all really green, this, no like houses or anything really to see. If you look behind you, you can see the back into Tamworth or, and Faisley where it's located. Then yes, you then drop down on a quite, it's quite an odd angle. I'll, I'll try and get a picture of it here on the screen now if I can find one. So obviously, I don't. You have to get on my POV for that. But yes, you drop down, bank down to the left. Quite a shallow drop at first, and then it starts to. It gets quite steep. I'm not sure on the exact angle of the drop. There's, I don't think there's a stat on that. But it drops down straight into the first inversion, which is a vertical loop. Now on the front, you get some really good hang time on this. On the back, you get some real good intensity. You get properly whipped around it. Obviously, there's 24 riders on this on a train, pop up to, up to, up to 24. I don't think I ever see it full, really, especially on quieter days. But yeah, tw you on the back road, you're whipped around, and it's really intense element. That's one of the most jolty parts of the ride, though. Going into the loop at the bottom, it's quite intense. So when you go into the loop, there's a bit of a jolt, and it's quite painful if you're on the back. So just watch out for that if you haven't ridden it before. Then you come out of the loop and then you go straight into the second inversion which is the only zero g roll on a standard coaster in the world people say it's understandable and i wish it was, there was more of them because it is nuts it is as digital dan would say airtime standing up on an inversion you put that together you think that's mad it it's it's only there's an there's only two standard coasters in europe and it's the only one with a zero g roll in the world so it's a pretty unique coaster straight away there um, I wouldn't say it's the most intense part of the ride, but I would say the best part of the ride. It whips through that. You you, you go from standing, you're standing up. You, you might be holding on, you might not. It's, oh, this bit, I love to not hold on. Because the, there's a bit of a gap on you between you, the top of the restraint and you. I'm I'm quite tall, so obviously most people there will be, unless you're really tall. And you, it's obviously, it's a clockwise, <laughs> I had to think then. It's a clockwise zero G roll. So you whip to the right. I can't even think what way around it is now. I'm very, either way, you whip around and you get smacked into the side of the restraint. It sounds painful. It's ha the pattern's quite good on the restraints. So it's not too bad. And then you, you get insane hang time. And then it whips back around to, you know, back to level. And you get thrown up into the top of your train. And the air time at that point is on another level. I would say some of the best in the UK. Everyone's a smiler, sore. I think it's shockwave, to be honest, on that on the zero-g roll. And then you come out of the zero-g roll after and exiting a moment of euphoria. And you go straight into a double corkscrew over the brake run. And then a second one that just, just 
just a corkscrew. They're pretty rough on the back again, pretty smooth on the front. I think that's the thing. If you want smooth, go on the front. If you want rough, go on the back. If you want intensity, go on the back. If you want, if you want good views, go on the front. Simple as that. And then there's a straight section in between there, which is pretty dodgy, but it gets across the path, which is obviously why it was built. Because it's done with a little, I think an airtime hill would have been quite good, a little bit bunny hole. But we're in the 90s at this time, so we're not expecting too much. Then you, ex you exit the second corkscrew, turn to the right, and then into the brake, into the straight section before the brake went even. The world, the world's most painful brake, but they're hilarious. So make sure to brace for them. It's a 1,640 feet foot coaster, so it's not a very long run, but it's so fun to re-ride. If it's quiet, like me, Coaster Jens, and Think About Jake went there in October, we got a couple of times where we just got let stay on the front because there was no one queuing. And if you go on a quiet day, I really recommend it. It's quite a big B and M uh, in intimate. I see. I'm getting confused myself. So it's quite a big bit intimate stand up here. And so it's like 53 mile an hour top speed. So it's not it's not the slowest. It's not a slouch. And G forces are up, up to 4G. So it's it's a pretty intense coaster, as I said. Obviously, this is before B and M was properly formed. So it was built by Giovanola, as a subcontractor, and it was a bit messy the construction. I know that. But obviously. You have to think about this coaster. This coaster is old, but despite that, it still packs a punch. It's a bit are you like Nem It's a bit like Nemesis. I would compare the coasters very much. They're really intense, quite whippy, very new for their time period. Obviously, Shotline's gone over and under a lot of changes over the years. It's been repainted a couple of times from like white. There's been sort of I think it's been like a bit of an aqua green. I think. And then it's obviously back to the beautiful light blue, which is my favourite colour scheme, I'm not going to lie, on it today. But yeah, that's the ride experience. And now I'll go on to, you know, my, my overall thoughts and the future of the coaster. Obviously, I personally love it. A big part of my life. First inverting coaster for me. My second, my, it wasn't my sec first inverting ride, but it was my first inverting coaster. The first inverting ride was Ramsey's Revenge, which is obviously removed, so it would be a shame if this got removed. I personally think it's got another five to ten years in it, minimum. And you won't say no, it won't. Don't mind struggling. I there's been many major rumours over the close season that Shockwave is being repainted, rethemed, all changed up. I then I would strongly think that that is the case. I know when I was there in December for the photo vlog. If you want to check that out, it came out a couple of days ago in December. There was that you can't say I don't check the photo vlog because I did I didn't have my phone out at the time. But there was a lot of people, you know, moving around. Like there's not not people the people weren't there, but there was a lot of movement. Like there was there's lots of construction going on in the back section just in between you and Shockwave when you're on the car park. So I could definitely see something happening over the close season. This is the first year Splash Canyon can actually open to the public as well. So they could do a complete overhaul of that Splash Canyon reopening. Re repaint, make possible re-theme of Shockwave, making that whole area come back to life, could really become a, a great park even from that. In, in really good Intamin Rapids, a really good Intamin stand-up, that's all I've got to say. It's a unique one, it's so underrated and so overlooked by many enthusiasts across the UK. So that's, I think I'm going to say it. You get out there and ride it. Get to Drayton Manor. Go support the local parks when they reopen. Obviously, it's now owned by the Looping Group. It's not a, it's not a family park anymore, but it's still a good small park for any UK enthusiast or well, from abroad. If you're going to Alton Towers, you might as well pop there on the way past for a day if you've got a chance. Solid, solid park, solid coaster, and I'm looking forward to doing more of these videos in the future. It's been a good one. I looking obviously if you got any suggestions for YouTube videos. Send me a message on Instagram, drop them in the comments below. Please like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you all next time. Goodbye.